Hello, welcome to another of my electronic also high voltage video. Today we'll be building a micro Tesla coil, also known as the solid state Slayer Exciter or Slater, which I find a very very good little plastic pipe, which I find just good enough to make a micro Tesla coil with, and in theory it should also be able to light up a CFL wirelessly. Before I go, uh, before I start the entire procedure, I'm just gonna talk you through how does the circuit work in its fundamental way. First, you can spot there definitely is a transistor, which is the switching unit you're gonna be using, a NPN transistor, of course, in this case. And here we have a transformer with the turn ratio of 3 to 200. And then we have a limiting current resistor and a LED to indicate the circuit is working, also protecting the base of the transistor from overvolting. But this is absolutely optional. You can do the circuit without it. In those lower powered circuits, usually you wouldn't really blow the transistor up at all. So now let's see how does it work. Of course, if without this resistor to power in the base, the entire circuit wouldn't oscillate at all. So the current first flow through the, uh, the resistor, which the value between 20 to 30 kilo ohms. And here we have a LED, light emitting diode, but from the direction of current, which would definitely not turn this on because we need the other way round. So, now when the transistor has been turned on, since the current flow from the resistor from the VCC power supply through a resistor to complete the base, we completed the, uh, the NPN transistor circuit which turned it on. This time, the current can flow through the primary windings of the Tesla coil or the inductor of the transformer flow all the way to the ground, which then generated a magnetic field. But for the electromagnetic induction law, we have the windings in a different way round. So this time, there will be a minus voltage. And one of the components that people often forgot about it is the self-existing ex capacitance existed all by itself from the top load which you don't have to give it any or the coil itself has some capacitance which is also known as the parasitic capacitance this is very crucial as this completed the circuit allowed the base to be drawn down and then in theory they will close the circuit now the transistor will be switched off and no more current will be flow through this inductor, thus allow the magnetic field to collapse and generate a very high voltage at the end. But then, the entire sequence will follow back again as the VCC turned the transistor on by flow through the resistor, which this is just a basic simple theory. Anyway of that, the LED will eventually be turned on from the other way of current flow. But in this case, if we want to find out the resonance frequency, basically followed by this formula, frequency equals the 2 times pi times square root of LC squared divided by 1, which would give us the frequency. So the smaller the number of LC, the higher the frequency will get. So in the circuit of such a few turn of an air core,
will basically give us about megahertz of frequency at the end according to the formula. But now we're gonna show you all the electronic components. Here you will definitely need a transistor. Here you have a transistor, a general transistor, 2N2222A, and a LED of course, optional. And we will need a resistor between 20 to 30 kilo ohms, which is just about here. The primary coil already been wound. And the secondary coil, we're gonna wind it later. And this capacitor, you do not need to make it at all. It exists all by itself. And that's it. Before we get any further, it's a good idea to have some tape and some Teflon tape, optional, this one. And of course, a base for your tester coil to go on. Now it's time to wind the secondary coil, around 200 turns or so more. So I'm gonna time lapse it and enjoy. Now, the entire process is done. You can either choose to put some Teflon tape, wrap it all around the entire coil, or choose not to do so. Just depends whether you want it or not. And usually you will put on some Teflon tape for some very high power tester coil. If you power it by like hundreds of watts, then I would definitely suggest you lacquer it or Teflon it. And the second thing we should be check out is that our primary coil can be fit onto our secondary coil, which we can. Basically, that means it's good. Third things. Now, it's one of the very crucial steps. A lot of people get it wrong because they don't follow this, uh, this step correctly. This step, you burn the lacquer, the enamel coating on the copper wire, and make sure you send it off, the burnt lacquer, so you can solder it. Here we'll have a lighter. Yep, we'll do the job. And here again, do the job, of course. And then we'll be sending it equally around the entire si side. The basic way of sending it is getting the copper wire, you put it on the sanding paper and pull, just like that. Do it for 50 times. And now we can test it. You can see it's 0.13 millihenries by using a inductor and multifunction tester. Here we've done the coil. And now you can choose to hot glue it down here just with a hot glue stick with no glue gun at all just by simply heat it up and here we go just draw some quickly and just stamp it down it's good to go of course you can also choose to add a top load to your coil 